Hey guys, it's Professor Williams again. Yep, more confidence interval stuff. Woohoo! All right, I'm gonna actually work a problem this time um, that has to do with the weight of bags of candy. Since um, this video is being made shortly after Halloween, let me show you how this is done and what it means. So, hang on and let's get going. Get out your calculators and your pencils, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, here we are. We all know that a three pound bag of candy doesn't really weigh exactly three pounds. Um, so, what we do is we go in and we sample 36 bags of candy and we weigh them. The average weight of our candy, the sample mean, is found to be 3.01 pounds, and we calculate a standard deviation of 0.03 pounds. So, I want to know with 95% confidence want to be 95% certain of what the weight of all of my three pound bags of candy is. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to set of two values, a low end and a high end in between which 95% of all of my bags of candy will weigh. That's the entire concept of a confidence interval, right? I want to be nine, I want to know the upper and lower values or weights between which 95% of all of the bags of candy, three pound bags of candies in the universe is going to fall. So let me show you how I'm going to substitute in to this formula. All right, let's see what we're going to get. Sample mean is X bar, isn't it? So, for X bar, I'm going to end up with, sample mean, 3.01 pounds. And that's 3.01 pounds on the end, on the lower end, 3.01 pounds on the upper end. Now, what else do I have? I have standard deviation of 0 0.03 pounds, because I know... The standard deviation of these bags of candy was 0.03 pounds. And I also know how big my sample was, don't I? I know that my N, or my sample size, was 36. So, almost done. Almost done. Now I just need to see what is my value for Z alpha divided by 2, or Z alpha Z sub alpha divided by 2. Remember, this is the idea that 95% of my data is going to fall in between these two areas. I know from my textbook, and because Z scores are standard everywhere, that the Z alpha value for a 95% confidence interval is always, write it down, always, always, always going to be 1.96. So I'm going to substitute in here 1.96 here, 1.96 here. Why is it 1.96 other than the fact that I just told you that it's always, always, always 1.96? It's because what this represents in terms of my curve. It means that 95% of my data is going to fall here. That's supposed to be even, so just roll with me here, guys. And if I know that 95% of my data falls here, then I know that between this end of the curve and this end of the curve is that other 5%. Remember, the entire curve equals 1. So if I take 5% and I divide it by 2, remember, it's equally divided between each tail of the curve. I know I have 0 0.25 here and 0 or 0 0.02 here. So the z-score of 1.96 is the z-score associated between this point that we're going to give a number to now, 
and the mean that contains 47 and a half percent of the data. If you look in your z-score table, you will see that a z-score of 1.96 contains 0 .4750 percent of the data because 95 percent divided by 2, because remember it's equal, this side and this side is equal, 95 percent divided by 2 gives me, let me get rid of some of this junk, gives me on each side at 95%, I end up with 0 0.4750 here. And on this side, because this curve is uniform, 0 0.4750 here. And if I use my z-score table backwards, and I find the z-score associated with 0.4750% of the data falling between this point and the mean here, I know that it's 1.96. So for those of you with inquiring minds wanting to know why is it 1.96, that's why it allows us to solve for any confidence interval, but for the standard ones for 95, 99, 80, you can go ahead and solve once and then simply slip these values in every single time. So let me do a little bit of math magic and solve this for you. All right, what was the first thing I did? I'm going to remember my order of operations. The first thing I did was I did this exponent. I mean, I did this square root down here. Square root of 36 is 6. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide 0 0.03 divided by 6 on each side and take you one step further. Okay, so now I've taken that 0 0.03 divided by 6 and I've come up with my 0 0.005. And remember, this formula is the same on the lower end and the upper end except for this. Remember, on the right side of the curve, we add. On the lower side of the curve, we subtract, right? But other than that, these two sides of the formula are identical. So now that I've completed this little piece of the formula, I'm now going to take 1.96 multiplied by 0 0.005 on each side of the curve. All right, so I did that math, and now what I know is that to get the lower limit, for a 95% confidence interval, I'm going to take the mean, remember x bar is right here, I'm going to take the mean and I'm going to subtract it to get this value here. I'm going to add it, I'm going to add it to get this value here because this is the positive side of the curve. And so let me go ahead and do that piece for you. So now what I've done is I've simply finished, finished my math, and what I know is that the mean, right, remember the mean is in the center, right, what I now know is that I am 95% certain that the true weight or the weight of all three pound bags of candy is between, the average weight is between 3.0, 3.0198 on the high side and 3.002 on the low side. And what that does is that lets me be 95% certain that the actual weight of every three pound bag of candy in the universe, if it could, every one of them could be collected up and weighed, they would all weigh between 3.0002 pounds and 3.0198 pounds. There's only a 5% chance that I'm wrong. And remember that 5% chance is split between half of my 
mistakes being on the high side and half of my mistakes being on the low side. So, in conclusion, the 95% confidence interval for the weight of all three pound bags of candy is going to be right here. So, hopefully this helps and I will see you guys around the, um, around the chalkboard. Have an awesome day.